several studies including Howard University has dwelled deep into the concept of power pose which is typically the wonder women of the super women pose where we put our hands on our hips and then fly off to greater heights quite literally there. Now the study has details on its potential benefits before a high stakes social evaluation. Right, that one pose you're talking about, this one, our audiences may remember it. It went viral a few years ago. 72 million people watched the TED talk about it. But a few years after the concept first went viral, there was actually a reckoning of sorts where researchers behind the original 2010 study came forward and said that further research made them believe that what they'd said were the power poses effects may not actually have been real. But we do know that there's a lot of interest, a lot of curiosity around body language and posture. And the science does seem to suggest that there are links between the way that you hold yourself and how you feel. But what is the connection? What is the science? The Breakfast Club breaks it all down for you. Uh, we'll bring you all of our guests. Joining us on the broadcast this morning, we have Ridhima Dua. She's an NLP coach who turns body language into an art form. We also have Dr. Kapil Kakkar, a body language expert and psychologist to help us decode and break down the secrets, the signals. Let's go over to both of them to understand more. Uh, let's go over to each of them. We'll first take our question to Ridhima. Ridhima, can you just explain to our audiences, uh, as we just told them, there was this uh, sort of viral internet flurry around the Superman pose and there was this thought that this pose will lead to confidence. Then many said, look, the science behind it isn't 100%. So Ridhima, tell us, what does the science show? What does the science say is the connection between your body posture and your emotions? Sure, Toya. A very good morning to all of the viewers out there. If you all observe that I am also standing and posing like this for all of them to learn as well. Right? And there is a difference when it comes to intent. So the science says one of the studies behind the body language, physiology and the change in the breathing has been done by Dr. John Grinder also. In the years around 1980s to 1990s, he has done a research on how respiration, breathing and the physiology can change your state of mind. And think about it this way. Supposing if I want to get into a meeting and when I get into a meeting with just a minute change with the intent that I'm going to be clear. And if I do this for a while, maybe less than a 30 seconds, the way my performance would be because my breathing would change, my physiology would change, and because my breathing and physiology is changing, my state of mind, which is physiology, neurological pathways, and biochemical reaction changes scientifically. And because of that, because of that, my performance, the way I am performing starts changing. It reflects for the person who is perceiving, it reflects confidence. So that's a study being done by Dr. John Grinder. The book Whispering in the Winds talks about that. And he has met more than a million of people and have changed more than 90% of the people who were there in the workshops around it using the science. Okay. Right, right. But uh, Ritma, can I then ask you a counter question? Is sure. confidence something that you can exhibit or it's just something that you are? I've always wondered there is nothing that can make the other person seem or feel that I'm confident. It has to come from within. Yeah, yeah you're truly right. Yes, exactly it is. There are two things into it. Yeah, we have heard about one of the saying, fake it until you make it. A lot of models hmm. who start their career, a lot of people in the industry, celebrities who start their career. If you notice, they are um, practicing a specific body language, which is take a chin up, take your shoulders straight, walk like that with your eyes, right? Until you practice this multiple time. When you practice this multiple time, what's happening is a question. What's happening is, your physiology, because your physiology is changing and your breathing is changing, 
the way your neurochemistry the way the pathways start developing is you start actually feeling that i do have confidence and then it starts coming within mm. but where does it coming from is experience it's experience so if i am telling you all that you can be confident like this it's not about um just one time that's not what i meant mm. what i meant is a continuous practice towards it with a deep intent changes the neurological pathways which come from our childhood yeah and it's like oh wow it can change me and that's where our whole celebrity industry if you observe it like they come from a different background they have been continually practicing and people out there in the social media who are influencers also continuous practice are uh, people in authority in different ways in politics continuously practicing that changes neurological pathways it's not only physiology it changes neurological pathways because neurological pathways changes biochemical reaction means the way the blood would flow inside the body would start changing that effects and impacts my physiology because my physiology is changing the way i would talk would start changing because of that mm. the way i would perform would also I start see. changing isn't it okay let's just go over to dr kapil kapkar yeah. to ask him another aspect of the same question rudma uh, dr kapil we've talked about so far at least with rudma we've talked about two or three things so she was showing us this pose she was also walking us through what walking with good posture looks like most of our audiences who are watching this right now are probably sitting already in their seats and you're sitting for large parts of your day i just want to ask you What are the things we can implement in this moment? That's question one and question two. Do we have to do the things you're about to tell us through the whole day to see the psychological effects? Do they only last while we're doing the pose? How does the whole thing work? All right, thank you. So I like to answer it in two ways. The first thing is that we have to understand any external stimuli. Yes, be it form of a thought or be it form of a body language or your body gestures. Hmm. is going to mm. pass the message to your nerve cells in your brain and that is how your mm. nerve cells are going to command you in turn so it is very important that we understand that whatever stimuli consciously or unconsciously we are giving is how we are going to perform i'll give you a very small example for example patients in bipolar now in bipolar what happens is for 15 days a person is up super active the body language is absolutely different the body language is open he's a go getter he's leaning forward the expressions are exuberant and the next 15 days the person goes down the same person when he goes down his shoulders are uh, uh, are slumped and you know uh, he's brooding and his body language facial expressions everything would change he gets into a closed body language mode so this shows the impact mm. of nerve cells the neurons on us now there are billions of neurons who are communicating through dendrites right now now let's now 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 let's do it uh, vice versa if we are commanding the mm. nerve cells rather than receiving their commands the things would change for example like what you asked me about the exercise and all now if you are squatting squatting with your hands crossed and your hands on your ear lobes and if you do it for 1 minute every day your brain uh, movement the nerve cells get a different message and which makes them more active it is also suggested every 20 minutes when you are sitting you need to do some form of exercise even for a minute it helps you activate your brain otherwise what happens is every 20 mm. minutes your brain mm. takes over you and that is where you might get into that slump you might get into that non active or inactive mode mm. one more thing i just want to just mm. for your viewers i want to uh, uh, just uh, say one more thing if you're splashing cold mm. water on your face be it for a minute or be it for few seconds you feel alert right why do you feel alert it mm. is again because of the nerve cells something has communicate been communicated to nerve cells and how and uh, hmm. and one more thing what is the uh, uh, frequency and what is the intensity of nerve cells when they communicate it is as quick as the way your electricity moves your electric current moves so anything that we are doing hmm. in any form which 
uh, what whatever uh, way it may be, it is going to have a direct impact. So when, for example, what you got now, uh, now one more thing. Now today being got Monday. Got now 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 today hmm. being Monday, you have Monday blues. Now if on a Monday you in the morning you are auto suggesting yourself that it's going to be a good day. It's a new beginning. It's a new week. Your whole nerve cells communication would be different rather than oh my god after two days holiday now I'm going back to my office. Hmm. The entire hmm. body hmm. language, everything is bound to change. Hmm. Well, that's good to know. But I wake up every morning thinking that it's going to be a fab day. <laughs> but I'm not sure how much of an impact it has on most days. But Ritima, I have a question for you. From what I'm gathering from what you guys are saying is that uh, you know. the mental mindset coming out in form of physical actions and the opposite as well of your physical action sort of telling you about your state of mind both of them are related that's number 1 and you're saying one feeds off the other so the whole concept of having a power pose is that you are on your journey to actually feeling like that is that a fair analysis um with that having said that yes um the most important part i would like to reiterate is finding your own way of feeling confident so there's a study which is also done and that is about micro muscle movement right so a little twitch like this for example in um in a meeting i may not stand like that and talk right that may not be very ecological or uh, based on the environment where i am in i'm meeting team members i may not stand like this however i can also feel if as my muscles have moved and my hands have actually gone there sending the message to my nervous system again very unconsciously just in a millisecond that i have a new performance state now right so that's one part of it that hmm. can i practice it more deeply with the intent that's one part of it second part of it is i would also like to mention in the social media era wherein we see visually any kind of a message coming in through our whatsapp email any of the social media or uh we hear someone talking something which is not suitable or not very um expected to us suddenly in a second or less we just shift you know so although i'm feeling very confident and i get a news that someone my family is not doing well i might go there but do i have the power within to take control of myself and get into performance okay what do i do now like just now to I also just shifted uh, the body it was into hearing and listening with a confidence so what do i do now yeah and this also has a great impact you know when people the ceos the ctos the chros all the executives when they go into meeting and they are in a meeting because it's a breakfast show i think it will make a lot of sense for a lot of viewers to hear this they are in a meeting they're listening to all the inputs from the team there is a real challenge out there now what do they do hmm okay they are actually taking an observer position on the same chair where they're sitting and it just shifts their own performance so there is a lot to talk about it uh, one is intent how much we have practiced and how much do we uh, know about our own selves the awareness that's something very very mm. important i do have one more thing to talk about um not copying is the key right so someone says only stand like this that's yeah. one style yeah what exhibits your performance do you think mm. mm -hmm, or do you think or do you think just like that and you're so natural in your body and you're still feeling that confidence mm. so it depends right mm. Mm. Let me just go over to Dr. Kapil Kakkar and ask him a question. Then related to this, Dr. Kakkar, I want to ask you. Uh, we started the entire discussion by also asking both of you, our experts, how our audiences can tell the difference between the science and the pseudoscience in this entire area. 
uh, there are a few different concepts. There's also a concept we haven't discussed in now called visualization, for example, where uh, they say the number of sports people across the world, for example, a number of our Olympians, they'll imagine everything that happens before it happens. That's supposed to be a positive psychology technique. So for each of these different techniques, A, how can our audience tell what is true, what isn't true? How can we navigate what's reality? And even with these kind of poses, who should we follow? How do we know what works, what doesn't work? The whatever is working for you is that it should be a reality for you. For example, somebody might go for visualization, somebody might go for auto suggestion, somebody might go for meditation. So whatever technique, which is see, because if you look at it, it has not been scientifically proven these things. But yes, it's been proven that they have a positive impact on a person. Now, how positive the impact is, it will depend from individual to individual and no individuals are the same because behavior and attitude is dynamic. For example, when you look at people across the world, for uh, now, now for, for example, uh, when you are smiling, now smile is something or sadness is something which is very natural to people across the world, which is uh, which, which transcends culture. Now, uh, when you smile, there's something called a mirror neuron. Now, what does that mirror neuron do, does is when you smile, the mirror neuron of the mirror neuron of the other person gets activated, and the other person starts believe, uh, feeling better. So, my point is that anything that you are doing, if it suits you, and please remember, visualization may not suit everybody, auto suggestion which may not suit everybody. That is where it becomes a pseudoscience. But even for the athletes, like I have represented India as a psychologist for World Skills, right? Now, you don't, uh, so my point is there's no thumb rule that one formula is Got going hmm. to have an impact on hmm. everyone. Each hmm. individual would have a different hmm. of uh, a dif different formula which one has to create for them. Hmm. Okay. Be it okay. Water okay. Water give us some tips now. Yeah. Give, us, give us some tips. It's Monday morning, people are going into work, hmm. everybody has big meetings or seminars or get-togethers to attend and they're feeling slightly edgy about it. Give them two or three things to do that can sort of up their confidence. Sure, lovely. So let's attach this also to uh, three different things. Um, if I am a visual person more towards like I see colors, I talk in large things, then this means that I can utilize visualization and people who are hearing it and they like music, they like to uh, talk in a rhythm, they say I hear we will use a different method or people who are into more doing, we can use a different method. So let's start with all three different methods which can suit three different mm. kind of categories or I might be having all of them equally combined, right? So a person who likes to clearly see and the person who, you know, the moment they hear, I visualize and they get connected to it, they can visualize themselves just in a very close uh, distance like this, this much, that how do I feel confident? They can think about a time when they have been into meetings and they felt like confident or they can think about a model, an influencer in their own personal life whom they think is so clear and confident. And when they think like it, viewers, if you're thinking like it right now, also in a second, and if you hear it, suddenly your body will start shifting. So shift your body in that posture the way you like confident. So it could be like this, up with your shoulders straight, with your chin up and being very comfortable with your skin and breathing normally. Mm. Now adding the auditory, now you've shifted your physiology, you've shifted your physiology. Now let's add sounds to it. How do you talk to yourself? What do you say to yourself? What clarity is coming? And with that, people who are more into kinesthetic, feeling, touch, mm. they can literally walk with that posture. So with tall, they can walk with the posture like this, or if they like their hands back tight. You know, we have seen authorities with their hands back rested very well, and they walk with that. 
is also a posture of authority for you if you do it just for less than a minute you would observe a shift in yourself mm. that's few of them and if you're going in a meeting just do it less than a minute maybe you can also use a mirror look at yourself in the mirror with that be very comfortable mm. with it that's something very important and last but not the least also remember you can come into an observer position by sitting or standing looking at yourself aha uh -huh. how do i need to perform today like this okay let's go ahead so do simple shifts Okay, Ridhima, Dr. Kakkar, okay. thank you so much for distilling everything you have for us. Dr.